What's going on YouTube? I'm that clone guy E and this is simply put sense. I'm so glad you guys are here. What's going on Rich Mitch? What's good my brother? Um, good to see you all. Let me just chill out for a second. Gotta make sure everything is on point. Du -du -du. Okay, boom, boom. Should have did all this earlier, but I had a long day. <laughs> so, didn't get to, but it is what it is. Um, I hope you're all doing blessed. Um, I'm really excited about today's, uh, today's stream because, you know, a lot of you probably think like, damn, bro, like you started your channel doing really easy, accessible fragrances that are like, you know, a lot less crazy in terms of price point. All of a sudden, you're working at Bergdorf Goodman, and everything you talk about is like a $300 bottle. <laughs> and you know what? I wanted to shift that a little bit because, you know, yes, I have been getting into a lot more niche fragrances. What's going on, Verduesco? Howdy. <laughs> I've been getting into more niche fragrances over the last few years, and yes, my tastes have shifted. I'm not into, like, the same old stuff that I was into. But like all of us, we evolve, we grow, we change, our tastes grow and change with us. And I'm not one of those people who like to dictate my taste. I go with the flow. If my taste takes me in one direction, I'm going to see what's going on. I'm going I'm to flow with it, you know? I don't really dictate my taste. My taste dictates what I'm into, you know? Um, so, yeah. But this is going to be a really, really cool live stream because so many of you might think, like, damn, bro, like, what happened? You don't, you don't give us, you know, quality, inexpensive fragrances like you used to. And I do still do that. I've been talking a lot about um, a few inexpensive perfumes. Uh, um, the Le Jardin Retrouvé collection is very, very affordable. Um, the H24 Parfum fragrance from Hermes is affordable. So I do, I do love fragrances across all categories. I'm not a, um, a niche snob now. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I work at Bergdorf. Um, I still love my Easy Breezies and, you know, but I am a fiend for fragrances that are artistic now. I don't want to smell Easy Breezy. I don't want to smell Easy like to everyone. What's going on, Micah? Nice to see you, brother. Um, and actually, I want to test something, guys. I'm curious about.
Pardon me, bro. So sorry, guys. Okay. <laughs> so sorry, guys. Um, yeah. Like, like I was saying, <laughs> new interface, new things I got to take care of. Um, so my scent of the day is going to be a fragrance. I wore three fragrances today. I started off my day wearing Elysium Cologne. Then after, you still can't hear me? You still can't hear me right now? Really, guys? You can't hear me? Hmm. Because everything is supposed to be on point at this point. Okay, good. I just want to make sure, Gio. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so you guys can hear it now. All right, Bert, perfect, perfect. Um, so anyway, like I was saying, um, sorry guys, sorry, sorry, sorry. Anyway, like I was saying, I wore three fragrances today. I started the day off wearing Elysium um, Cologne. Then halfway through the day, I wore a fragrance called Naked by The Maker, which is my line. And toward the end of the day, late afternoon, I put on I Don't Know What by DS and Durga. Um, all three fragrances that can work beautifully together if you want them to. And yeah, I just went off. Um, so that's what I was putting on my skin. So guys, I want to talk to you about, uh, like today's video topic is going to be about really well-priced niche brands that need to be considered because a lot of fragrances are luxurious these days. A lot of, pra like a lot of fragrances are above the $300, $250 mark, and I consider that a luxury category. Um, and you don't have to spend luxury money to smell luxurious. You don't have to spend... Um, three, four hundred, five hundred dollars a bottle for a fragrance to smell your best. You don't. Of course, though, if you did spend three, four, five hundred dollars on a fragrance to smell your best, doesn't mean you're going to smell better than the next person spending less than you, but it does mean that your fragrance will likely not be in the room with you when you walk into it. You know, very few other people are going to have your scent if it has a much higher price point. So you are going to smell more interesting to more people because they won't smell that scent all the time, like a Sauvage, for instance. So there is a benefit to spending a lot of money on perfume, but you don't have to. It's, it's amazingly beautiful to find hidden gems or find brands that create artistic fragrances that are high quality that don't kill your pocket. And I agree 100%, Micah. Um, Essential Parfum, Essential Parfum is... Really, really well done. Uh, I really like a lot of their fragrances. I also like how they're like the, they kind of remind me of like the, they kind of remind me of like Frederick Mall and how they hire certain perfumers and lift perfumers that they work with um, depending on the scent they make. They kind of remind me of like um, entry level Frederick Mall. You know, that's how I kind of see Essential Parfum. Uh, a lot of the fragrances they do are really, really, they smell a lot more expensive than they are. But that brand is not going to be on this list. Um, only because I do like their fragrances. I find them to be really well done. I find them to be better than most designer houses. I find Essential, Essential Parfum, Parfum to be better than a lot of niche fragrance brands. But I do consider them kind of like not the most artistic. So to me, they are a great entry-level niche house. Or a great place to get designer, designer fragrances for a much better price. To me, they're like, Essential Parfum I would describe as like high-end designer, basically. In terms of like how they're positioned, you know. But anyway, great brand, but I won't be talking about that brand. So, but yeah, awesome, 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 awesome suggestion, Micah. Thank you so much for that. So, let's get into it, guys. Um, we're going to start, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to get into these brands, but I'm going to focus on um, a brand that I consider like a, I guess you could say the brand that I want to talk about, I guess you could say this is like a honorable mention, you know? So the first brand that I want to share with you all is from the House Savoir Faire. And the reason why this brand is going to be an honorable mention is because I have not experienced this line. So guys, this is a brand called Savoir Faire. Savoir Faire is a black-owned 
jewelry brand. There are not a lot of them. They're very, very few. And I have to say, this brand is making a lot of noise. A lot of people are finding this brand to be pretty, pretty, pretty cool. And so I have not smelled Savoir Fair fragrances. And the reason why this is going to be an honorable mention is because I've heard amazing things about the line. And I love the fact that they offer 50 ml bottles for 135. I ordered this discovery set. You can order a discovery set from this brand from 1999, like $20 for five fragrances. Like that's ridiculous. Uh, one Amouage sample on eBay is probably the same amount of money. And so I really like the fact that this brand is offering fragrances that are very well priced. I am really excited to see how good they are. I'm getting that sample pack. So I'm using this as an honorable mention because a few of the people that I've known that spoke highly of this brand, I really trust their taste. So I'm going to see for myself how good this brand is in a few days when I get my sample pack, but I really don't know. I might do a sample. I might just do a, um, a first impressions on the, on the brand when I get the sample pack next Wednesday. We'll see. But really, really do like this brand. Really like what they're about. Really like the aesthetic. You know, you can tell they're just getting their feet wet in the fragrance world. The, the bottles are very generic. But... Man, I really like the names, Beau Noir, Soul Cafe, Ascension. Like these are the Whiskey Rose, Sin Santo and Sage. Like Sin Santo and Sage. I really want to smell what this smells like because I know it has Palo Santo and Sage in it. And I really like the scent of both. And Sage is a very niche experience in perfume. It can smell like body odor, under armpit, you know. Um, so there's a dirtiness to certain Sage fragrances that I'm really into. Um, but yeah. Honorable mention, all the, all the fragrance brands that I'm about to mention, by the way, guys, um, these are going to be brands that are, that some of you might know and some of you might not, but the majority of them are, are absolutely like next level in terms of quality. Um, well, they're all next level when it comes to quality. So this is the brand that I would like to focus all your attention on. I'm curious about them. Have you all smelled any of these? I'm curious. Have any of you smelled Savoir Faire fragrances? Um, I've heard really, really great things about them. Really cool. Anyway, can't wait to hear about it. Can't wait to try it. So brand number one, okay, in this list is going to be from the house of, you all know, Diptyque. Diptyque makes some of the best perfumes in terms of value you can find in the world of fragrance, especially for their eau de toilette fragrances. If you go to Diptyque's eau de toilettes, you'll notice that they are $175 um, for the 100 ml, $125 for their 50 mils. That is an amazing price for Diptyque perfumes in my opinion. Really, really great price point. A uh, 50 ml for 125 and you're getting fragrances that are not basic. You're getting fragrances that smell really, really floral. Like the thing about Diptyque is Diptyque is the house of flowers. You know, if you like the way a flower smells, a specific flower, there's a chance that Diptyque, Diptyque has made an excellent perfume based on that flower. Um, so if you're into flowers and it doesn't mean, and all I got to say also Diptyque's fragrances are not all femme leaning. There's a lot of these floral fragrances from Diptyque that a man can easily wear. Just to give you an idea, um, fragrances from this line that I really like. I found Ilio to be interesting. Um, this is their summer limited edition release. Um, not bad at all. Really, really not bad at all. Really interesting take on a, on a summer scent. Not my particular style, but I respect the style of the scent. Le Papier, which is a scent they just came out with, is a very musky experience. Um, I prefer I prefer Under the 13 by Le Labo more when you want that like that musky paper scent. But Le Papier is really, really well done as well from Diptyque. Dosan is a little bit on the prettier side, but if you're a woman watching this and you like fragrances of tuberose, 
Dosan is excellent. Felosikos is literally a, a reference fig fragrance, one of the best fig fragrances ever made. My issue with Felosikos is not only is it uber popular, but Felosikos is uber green. So if you're into green, you're gonna love Felosikos. O Rose is also well done. Tam Dao is well done. Eau de Sens, I really, really like Eau de Sens. It's a very fresh, kind of like old school scent, but I kind of dig it anyway. It's like a fragrance that will really blow people's mind when it's on your skin because it doesn't smell. Like if a man wore that fragrance, it's not gonna be something you would expect. So it kind of does stand out when you wear it. Um, L'Ombre Dans Low, another one that's in that old school vibe. Um, really, really great fragrances. This brand is just sick. I also love Old Dwell. If you like a nice, clean um, uh, vanilla that's on the lighter side, Old Dwell is like a, a, a quiet hum of a vanilla. Not going to overdo it. Really well done. This brand does great fragrances, guys. And look at the price point. It's just insane that you can get these fragrances. The fact that you can get 34 Boulevard Saint-Germain for $130 in a 50 mil size is, is theft. You're stealing. <laughs> I really dig um, uh, Diptyque's fragrances, and I really feel like they are a brand that really offers great value for what you're getting. The next brand that I'd like to share with you all is from the house, The Zoo. Now, this is a brand that not a lot of people know about, not a lot of people consider, not a lot of people even talk about this brand, but I love this brand. I love the perfumer behind this brand. I think the perfumer behind this brand is a genius. Christophe Lord de Miel makes this collection of fragrances. Christophe Lord de Miel is a very eccentric perfumer. He designed, um, he designed Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce, the legend fragrance that that is, you know, probably one of the best fast fashion fragrances ever made. Um, he also did um, Amber Absolute by Tom Ford. So this is a gentleman that really, really knows his stuff. And now, and he's just a really, really brilliant, brilliant perfumer. Somebody that I, I, I value when it comes to art. Um, he doesn't make easy fragrances. He makes artistic fragrances. And yes, Micah, 100% agree with you. The zoo is extremely underrated and slept on, and they should not be. They really shouldn't be. So we're going to get into the zoo. The zoo makes fragrances, in my opinion, that are very artistic, very unique, very, very well done. Something that you will not find most places. This brand does things that, in my opinion, are next level. Look at the price point. You get 60 mils for $135. Every single fragrance is that price point. Doesn't matter how strong, how intense, what ingredients, like the fact that you can get a 60 mil bottle of this artist's work for $135 is again, thievery. <laughs> it's one of the best bargains in fragrance, in my opinion, from a design, from a niche perspective. Club Design, great fragrance. Um, Fig My Love, great fragrance. Louis, Great fragrance. I need to try this one, but I tried this one. There's two Louise. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Spacewood. Great, great fragrance. Now, if we were to go to the next line, I, I really want you to smell. I wanted you to, um, I wanted to focus your attention on a couple of these that I thought was insane. Uh, Luscious Sunshine. Well, excuse me. Vetiver Rain. It's sold out. Great fragrance. Look at this. He's even offering autographed bottles of Tom Ford's Amber Absolute, the scent he made for $1,600. I know that's crazy, right? But Amber Absolute was Tom Ford's first perfume. The first fragrance from the Tom Ford brand was Amber Absolute. So it is kind of a big deal to own this fragrance with his signature on it, gotta say. And you can't get this fragrance on the market. It's like only available in the flacon for over $2,000. So yeah, this brand is next level. The Zoo is a brand that I think you must try. Definitely get a sample pack of this brand. Um, they're $65 for a sample pack. You can focus your attention on the style of fragrance um, that really focuses on your, well, you can focus on the sample pack that really reflects your style of scent. And I really, really would consider 
let's see, if I were considering these sample packs, I would consider this one, Lush set of five. I would consider Discovery set number three. And I would consider Discovery set number two. So two, three, and five would be amongst the Discovery sets that I would consider. And, and, and why not? <laughs> this one also. Yeah. So yeah, all of them. I probably wouldn't go with this one. Um, it seems to be the most pretty. Damn, I would actually get them all because <laughs> there's something in each one that I think is worthy, you know? Um, yeah, guys, just get as many of these samples as you can. Get your nose on. This brand is just amazing, 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 amazing. The Zoo by Christophe Lodemiel, one of the best perfumers that no one really focuses on or talks about in the world of fragrance. Christophe Lodemiel is also an activist. Like this man, he literally is like, he goes hard for perfumers, like really hard for perfumers. Like through Christophe, I learned that perfumers, they don't get royalties. So they are one of the only artists in the world of fragrance that sells their art to a brand to, to sell that they don't receive any money from each bottle. Like that's like, imagine a rapper or imagine a singer selling a million copies of a song and not getting at least like a dollar for each, you know, um, for each album they sell. That's literally what happens in the fragrance world all the time. Perfumers are probably one of the most ripped off artists in the world of art, I would say. Um, anyway, the Zoo NYC Next Level, get your nose on this brand. They are next level beautiful and um, very, very, very unique and beautiful fragrances, I would say. Got to get your nose on them. Another brand that m people must consider that they don't, that's also, that also has a very, very, very good price point, is this house called Majda Bakali. Majda Bakali. The reason why I put this brand on the list is because, and by the way, this list is in no order. It's just amazing fragrance houses. Um, the reason why this brand deserves to be on a list like this is because, oh, are they beautiful. Whoa, are they artistic. And whoa, are they well-priced. Like, this is one of the most artistic fragrance brands with an artistic bottle. The whole brand is all about art from the bottle to the scent. And you can get this brand's 50 mils for about $135 on Lucky Scent or Scent Bar, you know? Um, crazy that you can get these fragrances for a price point um, under $200 at all for any size, in my opinion. Fusion Sacre, right here. This right here, guys, is one of the most insane fragrances I've ever smelled. I can't describe what it is. Like if I were to say, what is Fusion Sucre? Like you can say it's an amber, it's a this, is and that. Fusion Sucre is everything. Like just pick a note, pick an ingredient, it's in it. <laughs> it's literally like a, a very, very hard fragrance to categorize. I can only say that it's a fragrance built for the cold. That's the only way I could describe Fusion Sucre. It is there's ways to describe it, but man, is it just one of the most complex fragrances in my entire collection of perfume. Um, very much a, a, an acquired taste fragrance that won't appeal to all people. But if you're someone who loves art and fragrance, if you're someone who wants to smell different than anyone anywhere near you, <laughs> I would definitely consider Fusion Sucre. Sucre. Uh, Fusion Sucre is next level. I also love this fragrance right here. Mon Nom est Rouge. My name is Red. Mon Nom est Rouge is one of the best rose fragrances that I own. That's high praise because I own a crap load of rose fragrances. I just find dark rose fragrances to be dope. You know, I just really love the way they smell. Mon Nom est Rouge is not your typical rose fragrance. This is smoky, incensey, sexy. Doesn't smell like you know, like Delina. It's not a Delina rose. You're not going to smell like grandma's soaps after the rain in the dewy garden. You know, it doesn't smell like, like air freshener. You know, it's spicy, dark, resinous, incensey, sexy. Rose fragrances that are considered sexy 
worthy of attention. Um, this collection, in my opinion, just beautiful, next level. One of the things that I did find, though, like if you were to go on Lucky Scent, which is one of the only places where you can find Majda Bakali, they have um, great price points. And I just want to give you an idea of what the costs are, just to give you, you know, some, some reference. Majda Bakali. Majda Bakali fragrances are just insane in terms of the pricing. And let me show you guys. So if you were to go and look at their prices, right? Let me show you what Monome Rouge costs. Monome Rouge costs $140 for a 50 ml. The fact that you can get that fragrance for $140 is insane to me. I just think it is next level. Um, it is just next level. This fragrance could easily be in that three, four, five hundred dollar range. It's luxurious. It's luxury, guys. And there's nothing in the world of perfume that's like it. Now, there are a few fragrances that are trying to do what it does, but this fragrance has a very unique expression, and I think the expression it comes with is just sick. Now, if you go to Scent Bar, you'll be able to find these fragrances, like the majority of the fragrances in the Majda Bakali collection are available on at Scent Bar. Um, Fusion Secret can be purchased for $140 for the 50 mil, $230, $230 for the 120 mil. Not 100 mil, $120 for $230, guys. I just got to tell you, it's a bargain. It's a freaking bargain. So what does fusion? What does what do people consider fusion? Oh my God! And that's right. Uh, this fragrance, Fusion Secret, was made by one of my favorite perfumers of all time, Bertrand Duchaufour, who is like one of the most masterful perfumers in the world of fragrance. I wish he actually ran a fragrance brand. Like I wish he was the in-house perfumer for Gucci. But of course, Alberto Morias. <laughs> But I think that Bertrand Duchaufour is probably one of the most artistic, like just, uh, his fragrances are just amazing, guys. Like just next, next level. Um, anyway, Fusion Sucre, Fusion Sucre can be owned for prices that are just a steal, just ridiculously a steal. No one is talking about this brand in the world of fragrance. Why? I don't know. I probably do know. You know, because it's like most influencers these days don't talk about something unless it's already popular, it seems, you know, and that's annoying because you uh, like a perfume reviewer is supposed to an influencer is supposed to influence you to try things you never even knew about. But influencers today are just sending people and just ushering people in the same old, same old directions. But this is a brand that you definitely need to know about and more people need to focus on this company. And the pricing is just, as I mentioned, next level. It's, it's thievery. <laughs> it's thievery. So yeah, this brand, Majda Bakali, check them out. Get samples. You will definitely, definitely appreciate the artistry if you are a person who appreciates art and fragrance. I just, I mean, I would try them all. <laughs> I really would. I really would. Anyway, next brand from the house of Kerosene. Kerosene, guys. Hate the website, love the fragrances. <laughs> this brand is one of the best niche bargains in the world of fragrance. It is without question one of the best niche houses in the world of fragrance for the value that you're getting, okay? So let me just get, get into this really quick. This fragrance right here, Followed, is a flanker of Follow, this one right here. Followed, up here, $152 for 100 mils, guys. This is one of the strongest fragrances that is coffee forward in the world of fragrance. This is probably the strongest coffee perfume ever made. Followed sticks around so long that you need to like take a bath to get it off your skin. Like You got to soak that fragrance off your skin. Um, that's how strong it is. This brand makes some of the best, I would say this brand, this brand makes fragrances that are very niche, very artistic, 
not trying to smell trendy, not trying to smell easy going. This brand makes a statement when you wear any of these perfumes. Um, among my favorite, I love Unknown Pleasures. I did a review on this fragrance. It's beautiful. $152 for 100 ml of this and, and Dior Sauvage is more expensive. It's, it's like, how could you choose Dior Sauvage over Unknown Pleasures? I just, I just, I just don't know. If I had the amount, like the amount of money to buy a 100 mil of kerosene is about the same cost as Y by YSL. If you are a guy who's considering buying Y by YSL when a fragrance brand like this exists, I just don't know what to tell you guys. Like that breaks my heart. <laughs> that breaks my heart because these fragrances right here will have you smelling insane. Let me just go through them. I like, they, I like a lot of these fragrances, but among my favorite, Followed, Follow. I love Pretty Machine, really weird stuff. Kind of smells like a car. I know that's crazy, but I love the way it smells. Very, very unique. Fields of Rubis, one of the most awesome patchouli-based fragrances I've smelled in a minute. These fragrances are very, very thick, very deep. It's like a beautiful patchouli. You're not going to smell like, you know, like you belong in Woodstock. Um, Fields of Rubis is just next level. Um, Rude Elements is a beautiful take on oud with citrus. It's a citrusy oud. Beautiful. Uh, Santalum Slivers, insane. Unforsaken, well done. Woodhaven, I mean, there's so many great fragrances from this line, and the fact that they're so inexpensive all these years later is next level. Also, the guy who runs this house, his name is John Pegg, he used to be a YouTube influencer. So I also find this brand very, very aspirational and inspirational because they represent like the fact that it just shows you that if you really, really love fragrance and you really have the, the, the passion to learn as much as you can, you can be an artist also. You know, you don't have to go to school to, to learn how to make a beautiful fragrance. You just need time, patience, the right materials, and, you know, some mentoring, you know. But this brand just goes to show that, man, it's awesome. You don't have to be a trained perfumer to make art, to make crazily beautiful fragrances. Um, I just, I would consider buying every scent in terms of, like, trying them. I would try to, I wouldn't buy every bottle in terms of the, the retail price I'm talking about. I would, I would buy a sample of each one of these fragrances and try them. It's hard to find kerosene in a store to wear them, to try them, but um, yeah. And you see these metal plates, they were all hammered by hand. So all of these letters are actually etched in because they were hammered into the metal. This guy is sick. John Pegg Kerosene, a sick brand, really well-priced, really artistic, beautiful perfumes, an American brand as well. Um, yeah, consider kerosene because they just, you just, it's just, it's just crazy, 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 crazy artistic for what you're getting. Um, the prices just don't make sense to me. They just really don't, but I'm grateful. I'm really grateful. <laughs> the next house I want you all to consider Paris Monte Carlo. Paris or Paris is awesome. <laughs> Oh, God, these fragrances right here, guys. So Perry, Perry, Perry Monte Carlo is a line that most people don't care about. Most people don't focus on. Most YouTubers, most influencers, most people on TikTok, they don't focus on this brand. This brand is next level. And I think the reason why nobody's focusing on this brand, they're not sending free bottles to people. They're not really doing the most in terms of like influencers and getting influencers to co-sign their brand. Paris is just doing things in a really, really authentic way. I'm a huge fan of this collection. First of all, they have gold bottles, which is inspired by the Middle East culture. The black bottles are just really, really beautiful, dark scents that have like a lot of character to them. The clear bottles are just their freshies, their citruses, the Italy collection. 
The Le Parfum de Grasse collection is a bunch of fragrances inspired by realistic interpretation of flowers. I mean, very realistic interpretation of flowers. And then, of course, my favorite fragrances from this company is the Extrait de Parfum. The Extrait de Parfum from this brand, and look, I own this scent called Nosy, Yelang Yelang Nosy B. Um, Yelang Yelang Nosy B is probably one of the best yellow floral fragrances I've ever experienced in the world of fragrance. Um, the Extrait de Parfum are also very well priced. They're 50 mils, they're around $300. And I think that is well priced when you smell them. Like when you smell Oud Imperial by their extra Oud Imperial, you would say like, whoa, $300 for this is worthy. Um, but yeah, I want to go into a couple of these collections though. Paris Monte Carlo. You can buy Paris Monte Carlo, these 90 mil bottles. They sell for, you can get 100 mils for like 200 and you can get 50 mils for 135. Like the fact that you can get a 50 ml of this fragrance line for 135, 100 ml for 200 is another great value brand. This brand is just excellent. The fragrances are very, very French, very, very niche, very well made. Some of them are stronger than others, but I can wear some of their lightest fragrances and not feel cheated because the experience that they give while they last on you is so refined and high quality. It's like, it's worth spraying it again. <laughs> it's worth the chore of just respraying your scent after it calms down. You know, um, they're that in, in they're that impressive. Um, this brand is also a very amazing heritage brand. They have a sister line that you all know of, Ubigon, and I really feel like Ubigon and Perry is just, just. Just unsung, unfocused on houses that need and deserve attention. That's just the best I could put it. I mean, um, from this line, Yelang Yelang Nosy B, great fragrance. Oud Imperial, not a bad one. I appreciate the X-ray even more. But the Oud Imperial is a great scent, um, a really great scent. The Rose de Tiaf smells exactly like rose. Vanille de Tahiti, great fragrance. They recently came out with the elixir or the extray of this, and it's just, oh my God, um, amazingly beautiful. The patchouli is well done. The osmanthus is well done. My, one of my favorite fragrances from this collection is the Cacao Azteca. Cacao Azteca is so beautiful. It's not a loud fragrance. It's a very warm, sexy cacao fragrance. Chocolatey, but not chocolate. It's not gourmand. It's just a really, really excellent take on cacao. Paris Monte Carlo is just, like I mentioned, like I mentioned, guys, just an amazing brand that definitely deserves focus and attention. The Gold Collection has just amazing fragrances. Like, I like the Bois d'Oud. I like the Essence de Patchouli. I like Ambre Gris. I love Mousse, Mousse Extreme. Um, they're all really well done. The Italy Collection, lighter, easy breezy. My favorite from this collection, I would say, uh, and it's not taking me anywhere. <laughs> um, but the favorites, my favorites from the Italian collection, I would say, was the Cedro di Diamante. I liked the the Bergamot. wasn't too bad, but it wasn't amongst my favorite. I love the Mandarino. Mandarino is such a beautiful citrus. The Neroli is great. These three are my favorite, Cedro, Mandarino, and Neroli. Um, the Arancia de Cecilia is also pretty beautiful. Um, my least favorite is the Bergamot, though, and I love Bergamot, but this one wasn't really doing it for me. But just the entire collection is just amazing, guys. And of course, the white bottles. If you're liking the white bottles, I would say the Rose de Mai is crazy. The, la the lavender smells like actual lavender. Not like, you know, fresh laundry. No, that smells like the flower. And it's so realistic, so well made. It's like art. Um, they're all well done. The mimosa, beautiful. One of my favorite mimosa fragrances in the world of fragrance comes from Perry Monte Carlo. And of course, they're extras. Every extra, in my opinion, is worth owning. In my opinion. Every one of these fragrances are worth owning. Although my favorites... 
Tahitian Vanilla. This right here just came out. It is really beautiful. It is absolutely sexy. It's a very huggable vanilla. Like I want to I want to hold this. Like I want to smell this all night. <laughs> beautiful fragrance. Patchouli Nosy B, great scent. Ylang Ylang Nosy B. I own this right here. Great fragrance. $360 for 50 ml extrays are not cheap at all. This is not why I feel like this fragrance brand deserves to be on this list. It's for their other bottles that are $200 and below. I can't get over the fact that you can get this brand for $200 and below. But if you want the extrays, which I feel like are very superior, ugh, $360 for these are very, very, very well priced. They just smell expensive. They smell exclusive. They just smell rich and they smell artist, artistic. They don't smell like basic fragrances. This is not entry level niche. This is art, you know? So great brand, Paris Monte Carlo. Focus on that collection, guys. The next brand, you all know about this collection. You've all seen this before, Andy Tower. Andy Tower, in my opinion, is also an amazing bargain in the world of perfume. Uh, some of their fragrances are expensive. Some of their fragrances are not so expensive. But one of the things that I love about the collection of fragrance, they smell beautiful, they're interesting, and they're very, very well priced. They're very, very, they're easy to, they're easy to afford if you really want them. The most expensive fragrance that I've owned from this collection is the Eau Cour de Désert. And this fragrance is a 50 mil, $185.76. Fascinating price point. I wonder what the 76 cent in each bottle is paying for. Um, <laughs> but yeah, guys, like Andy Tower, you all know this line. You all know this company. You all know this artist. Andy Tower is a great, great, great artist. An independent perfumer who taught himself how to make fragrances and created some of the most iconic fragrances in the world of niche. This fragrance right here, L'Air du Désert Marocain, is one of the most amazing um, takes on amber I've ever smelled. Um, I do prefer the Eau Cour a lot more because I feel like it's taking what um, the Marocain fragrance did and it took it up a bunch of notches. So I appreciate Eau, Eau Cour de Désert, but a lot of people love the original because um, L'Air is just sick. Uh, L'Air des Alpes Suisse is another fragrance that I'm actually a big fan of. Um, Lea des Alpes Suisse smells like fresh, clean, brisk mountain air. That's literally what the scent smells like. Very, very, very beautiful. Very well done. $141 for a 50 mil price. I just, I feel like that's also well, well done. Um, the fragrance brand can give you excellent options for under $200. You really, really can't go wrong with Andy Tower. Um, these are the classics. I just love them. You know, uh, Okua, Lea, Lea des Alpes Suisse, Lone Star Memories, great fragrance. Um, I just feel like these are insane. I also, huh, Vault, Lud, Sun Downer, I thought was insane. Um, Fion Rose de Kandahar is also pretty awesome. I'm really, really, I like the Incense Rose. I mean, <laughs> great, great brand, guys. Just an amazing brand. Um, Andy Tower, in my opinion, is also a brand that only people in the world of, like, I guess you could say only, like, um, only, I guess you could say, fragrance lovers understand this brand. Only fragrance enthusiasts knows about Andy Tower. Most people don't even know this brand exists. So even if you wear the most popular fragrance, you're going to smell like the most unique person in the room to most people. So Andy Tower, excellent pricing, excellent product for the pricing. Could easily be double what they sell for, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, Andy Tower, sick. The next brand, Imaginary Authors, guys. Imaginary Authors is probably one of the best priced brands you can purchase perfumes from in the niche context. Like, who? <laughs> this brand does make fragrances under $100 for their, um, for their fragrances. Just to give you an idea, Memoirs, Memoir of a Trespasser is one of the best vanilla fragrances in the world of niche. And the fact that you can get this fragrance 
for the price of $105 for a 50 mil is thievery. It's stealing again. <laughs> and I love the fact that this brand uses this oaky, witty experience to go along with the vanilla. Guyac wood is a really great combination with vanilla as well. Um, Andy Tower is just insane, guys. Like $105 for a 50 mil of this fragrance is not just affordable. It's just like, it's, it's, it's a bargain. <laughs> it's a bargain. I hate using words like that, but it's a bargain. Um, their fragrances are just next level. This is one of the best vanilla fragrances by an independent brand in the world of fragrance. And the fact that this fragrance was made about 11 years ago in 2012, that means that this fragrance was a lot more popular back then. People have forgotten about it now. Even people in the niche, even niche lovers have kind of like moved on from memoir of a trespasser. So if you did wear this fragrance, you're just going to smell seriously great. Seriously great. Saint Julep, I like this fragrance. I just wish that it lasted longer. Um, it doesn't stay on my skin, uh, but I do love the way it smells. If this fragrance lasted a lot longer, I think it would have been such a big deal in the fragrance world, but it doesn't, and it's still great. It's still a great scent, just not what it could be, but a great fragrance. And for the price of 105 for the 50 mil, just drop it in a decan and take the fragrance with you. The price point is that low that it's worth the chore, you know. Um, Imaginary Authors is a great brand. Um, I love Memoir of a Trespasser. I love St. Julep. Um, I love the way, let me see, Cape Heartache is another one that I really like. Um, this is a brand that I definitely would say get a gift set, smell them, see what they're doing, and just behold, it's just that good. Um, uh, what else? I thought was great. Cobra and Canary was cool. Sun Drunk wasn't bad at all. Um, o Unknown is pretty cool also. Um, Cape Heartache, Every Storm, A Serenade. These are the original ones. Uh, Memoirs of a Trespasser, all great fragrances. City on Fire is sick if you like a fragrance that smells like burning cities. <laughs> if you want a city on fire, get a city on fire. It smells like, it, if you like scents that smell smoky, you're going to love it. It's really good. So, like, if you like Tyrannosaurus Rex by, by Zoologist, you're going to find a city on fire really up your alley. It's a great brand. And um, I like the fact that they also have soaps and candles also. Imaginary Authors, great brand, very, very, very slept on, and it shouldn't be. The next house, guys. My favorite designer brand in the world of fragrance, Combe de Garçon. Comme de Garçon, in my opinion, uh, <laughs> I just feel like Comme de Garçon is like so well made, so insanely rich and beautiful, so sick. And the fact that you can get these fragrances for typically under $200 is just next level. I, I just, I mean, I keep saying the same things about all these brands, but it's just crazy that these brands offer the fragrances that you can get from them at the price point that they give that they offer them for. I just don't understand how they're making money. <laughs> um, but I just love the fact that this brand, um, Comme de Garçon, just does fragrances better than most designer houses for a niche taste. If you're a person who loves niche fragrances, but you don't want to spend over $200 to own a niche experience, consider Comme de Garçon. Comme de Garçon is one of the best, if not the best designer brand in the world of fragrance because even their designer fragrances smell niche. Even them, they, they don't make fragrances for people to smell nice. They don't want you to smell nice at Comme de Garçon. They want you to smell interesting. They want you to be that person when you walk into the room, people want to know like, what is that guy wearing? They, like, did he just finish painting? Like, why does he smell like that? <laughs> That's what I love about Comme de Garçon. Their fragrances are for, the, are for the person that wants to stand out and doesn't care what other people think. I love this brand for that reason because I love to encourage my audience to not care what people think. Caring what people think makes you smell basic. Caring what people think makes you smell like everyone. Comme de Garçon doesn't make fragrances that make you smell nice. They just don't. Their fragrances make you smell 
special. Their frequencies make you smell interesting. Their frequencies make you smell beautiful, but not nice, you know? Um, just to give an idea of the fragrances that I like from the line, um, the Stussy fragrance from, from the our song, really, really funny fragrance, um, really clean, easy, breezy scent. Wished it lasts longer. Marseille smells like it's straight up soap, you know, but it doesn't smell like cheap soap. It smells like a really modern take on soap. You're not going to smell like cheap soap. You're not going to smell like old soap. You're just going to smell soapy clean. And it's one of their recent fragrances. This one right here was done by Cause, the artist, the graffiti artist. Um, I haven't smelled it, but I heard it was pretty interesting. I do want to try it, though. But my favorite fragrances from this collection has to be this collection, these fragrances right here. I love Hinoki, which is this one right here. I love Sugi. I love Laurel. I mean, they're all really, really good. All green, all fascinatingly beautiful. Nothing like it in the world of fragrance. You've got to try the monocle line from Comme de Garçon if you want to smell beautiful green fragrances. I got to just put it like that. Um, Avignon, the incense collection. Avignon is one of the best incense fragrances ever made. It's not even a question. That's how great that fragrance is. It's one of the best incense scents ever, ever, ever made. Kyoto is also really good. Zagorsk, I really like that one also. But Avignon is special. Um, a lot of fragrance brands wish that they can create incense fragrances that smell that good. I just want to put it to you like that. I also feel like it's a little on the lighter side. I wish Avignon was more intense. But again, Comme de Garçon doesn't make fragrances that are over the top. But this perfume right here, Black, which is um, basically Comme de Garçon's like fragrance to match the, the, the clothing line that they created, which was also called Black. This fragrance is one of the best dark fragrances for men I've ever smelled, not just from a designer brand, but from any brand, any brand. I really love Black by Comme de Garçon. It's art. It's fascinatingly beautiful and interesting. It's a dark, fresh fragrance, which is like a really, it's a style of perfume that I really love. I love dark freshies because they're very versatile. They're very unique and interesting. But every fragrance in this, and every note in this fragrance is considered dark, you know? Um, black pepper, smoky incense, right? Black leather, licorice, birch tar, tar, you know? Um, Cedarwood, vetiver, and pepperwood are also in the fragrance, but nothing in this fragrance is easy. Nothing. It's probably like one of the most artistic fragrances that you can get for under $150 in the world of perfume. I'm just blown away that this fragrance isn't everywhere. No one is talking about it the way they should. I feel like black is just, it's, it's special. It's special. That's just the only way to put it. Comme de Garçon Black is beautiful. Um, huh. Just amazingly beautiful. Um, now, going back to the pebbles. <laughs> okay, out of the pebbles, guys. I'm a huge fan of Rouge. Rouge is probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite pebble at the moment. Rouge is just one of the most like beautiful, berry full, incense scents I've ever, ever smelled. It is literally the scent of the color red. There's no other word for it. It's the perfect name for that fragrance, Rouge. Um, I love copper. Copper reminds me of Sunshine Man, but more, more interesting. So Sunshine Man by Amouage reminds me of copper. If you're, so Sunshine Man by Amouage, by the way, guys, that's being discontinued. I don't know if you know that. But Sunshine Man, unfortunately, it's being discontinued. And that annoys me because I would discontinue all of the new fragrances from Amouage before I would discontinue that. But it is what it is. I don't run the brand. <laughs> but Copper, in my opinion, is sick. If you did like the fact, if you did like the scent of Sunshine Man and you're wanting to spend a lot less for it, Copper is an insane consideration. You get 100 mil 
for about $165. All of these fragrances are about $165 for the 100 ml. Again, very well priced for the art, for the, for the scents you're getting. I, I just feel like they're all worthy of that price point. Even the ones that I don't love and I want not buy, I just think they're all worthy of that price. Um, I feel like uh, Floriental, beautiful. Two Man, two, both of these, sick. Santal Blue, sick, or Blue Santal. Um, this one I'm not a big fan of. The, the, the first two, these two, not the biggest fan of them. But these three, love them. Wonderwood, love it. Amazing Green, love it. Wonder Oud, love it. Wish there was more Oud, but love it. Floriental reminds me of like um, the Andy Warhol fragrance by Bond Number no. 9 when they were making great fragrances. <laughs> um, Floriental is sick. Sick, sick plum fragrance. I'm a huge fan of plum. Black pepper, awesome. Every fragrance in the pebble line is worthy of trying, in my opinion. And um, some of them are just classic fragrances that are definitely, definitely timeless, will be relevant forever. So, huge fan of that brand, Comme de Garçon, next level. The next line I'd like you all to consider that is well-priced niche fragrances that smell so much more expensive than they are from the house of Nicolai. This fragrance brand is sickening. This brand is um, by the perfumer Patricia de Nicolai. She's from the house of Galan. She's a family, she's a Galan. She's a Galan. <laughs> she's a Galan, um, but of course her name is different, I think, through marriage. But this woman knows her stuff. She is pure expression of French perfumery. And the fact that you can get her intense fragrances. All of this is her intense perfumes. These are, you know, by the way, I love this one. Ambre, cashmere, intense, sickening. Um, which else is awesome? Um, the, the New York intense, sick. Um, <laughs> patchouli intense, sick. Neroli intense, crazy beautiful. Um, Bacal leather, sick. Guys, every one of these fragrances are worthy of trying because they're just lovely, they're French, they're excellent, they're quality, and look at the price point. Let me just show you something. This fragrance, New York Intense, by the way, is a fougere. It smells like a rich boss, right? Um, it has a little bit of a classic style, it does give a little bit of a old school style, but the fact is, you can get all of Patricia Nikolai's 30 mils for under $100. Guys. You're collectors. You don't need 100 mils. You don't need a 250 mil bottle. 250 mils of New York Intense is about $375. <laughs> That's less than like a 50 mil of effing fabulous by Tom Ford. And it's a way better fragrance. I mean, it's not even a question. It's a way better fragrance. And I mean, I love effing fabulous, don't get me wrong, but I do feel like New York Intense in terms of perfume, in terms of composition, it's a better scent. It's a more, it's a more interesting, well-made fragrance. And again, crazily well-priced. $100, you can buy a 30 mil of New York Intense for under $90. I mean, guys, I just don't know what to say. Nikolai is just seriously great. All of these fragrances are just beautifully done. I'm a huge fan of this one also, the Amber Cashmere Intense. This is a great amber fragrance, but it has, again, a very classic style to it, a very galanade styled perfume, but beautiful and captivating. Like, I sprayed it on my skin last night just to smell it because I hadn't worn it in a while. And I kind of forgot that I had it on and I kept smelling it. And I was like, what is that? It was <laughs> Ambre Cashmere. Seriously beautiful fragrance that deserves a lot more attention. Most people don't talk about it at all. Um, but yeah, this brand, the fact that you can get their 30 mils for such a cheap price is the reason why it's on this list of um, great, well-priced, affordable niche perfumes that are artistic and just insane. And this is one of those fragrance brands that are just way better than their price point would suggest. Which suggests. 
um, another seriously well-priced artistic brand in the world of niche is Prin. Now, Prin does create very expensive stuff. They have three different brands within the Prin umbrella. You have Perf Parfum Prisana, Strangers Perfumery, and Prin, right? Um, the first brand that this brand came out with, of course, was Prin. Then they came out with Parfum Prisana, and then their last collection of fragrance was Strangers Perfumery. Strangers Perfumery is the bargain I'm going to focus on. They do have other fragrances. This brand creates only 30 mil sizes, except for this one. <laughs> their uh, their in exclusive fragrances are a little bit more expensive. Um, do not look at this. Like It was probably like $3,200. Oh, no, guys. That's definitely not the pricing of these fragrances, only because um, it's a Thai brand. So you will be able to find... You'll be able to find these are the prices for, I had to switch to American prices. These are the prices for this brand's 30 mils. You're getting great quality, high quality, very, very artistic perfumes that are approachable, that are not weird. Some of them are, but that's not a bad thing. But they're more approachable in this collection. The, um, this brand, the, the collection within Friend Strangers, it's just a very, very easy, breezy, entry-level experience into this brand. And guys, like when I tell you they make great fragrances that you can get for $100 or less, $90 for these fragrances is just, it's just really, really a great price point. Just to give you an idea of what I really dig, Cigar Rum, great scent. Um, Burning Ben, really like that one also. Very interesting, smoky fragrance. Um, I loved the... I love roasted coffee, <laughs> roasted coffee, cigarette, whiskey, come and get your suede honey baby. That is a weird ass name, but an amazing fragrance. <laughs> really, really, really well done. The cafe, great scent. Um, green, salted green mango. So many of you, I'm sure, has heard of that. Well made scent. Yuzu soda, great fragrance. This brand just does things beautifully, guys, and they don't kill your pocket. You know, yes, it's a 30 mil size. Yes. And yes, for the price per mil, it's comparable to other, you know, expensive fragrances. But you're not spending that. You're spending $90 to have a 30 mil. And if you're a collector, that's probably all you need. And um, I really think this brand is just next level sexy, next level interesting. You're getting fragrances that literally no one will smell on others but you for under $100. An amazing bargain in fragrance. So guys, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. My ten favorite fragrances um, that are well priced that are not going to destroy your pocket. I do have a couple of others that I was going to talk about, but you know what? I'm going to save that for another video because I have other fragrances that I'm going to do a new ten of well priced niche fragrances. So guys, what do you think? I'm curious. Um, have you guys been into any of these brands? What fragrances have you all been smelling? I'm really, really curious to get your opinion. Um, I really feel like a lot of these brands are known. A lot of them are kind of slept on, but all of them excellent, excellent experiences. Let's see. Um, let's go back. Dictique candles are great. The zoo is underrated. 100% agree with that comment. Uh, let's see. Absolutely. A couple of these brands might make it to my next video. Not going to say which, but you already know. <laughs> Verduesco. Yes, kerosene is awesome. People sleep on that brand, but man, they should not because, boy, kerosene kills, man. Kerosene really, really kills. Designer brands exist for people who use fragrance for utility, not artistry. 100% will. You make a great, great point. Um, designer brands are about, you know, just smelling nice. They want you to smell nice. Most people want to smell nice, you know. Most people don't want to smell interesting. But after you've experienced perfume, after you've bought a bunch of nice smelling fragrances, you eventually want to graduate, you know. It's like, you know, when, when you're a person that drinks wine, you know. You probably start off buying a $12 bottle of Yellowtail, but then over time, you're like, wait a minute, 
there are so many better tasting wines than Yellowtail and you want to graduate. So these are great fragrance brands to graduate to, you know, but when you graduate to these brands, you're not spending the kind of money or the luxury price point that a lot of design, that a lot of niche brands demand. You don't have to spend Roger fragrance prices to smell like a rich person. And smelling like a rich person isn't the focus. My focus would be more about smelling like someone that people want to know what I'm wearing. I want to smell like something that you want to know. I want to smell like something you don't know but want to know when you smell me. That makes sense, I think. <laughs> um, you better be talking about precious liquid at some point. <laughs> wow. Yes, um, I really... Why do I keep trying to scroll your screen? That's hilarious. <laughs> Votoesco, you're killing me, brother. Could you ever interview John Pegg? That's a great, great question, bro. Um, I would absolutely reach out to him and see if he would be open to being on. Um, funny thing, I one time said to John after I bought a couple of his fragrances, right? I bought a bunch of, I bought a couple of his fragrances and I was like, um, I would love to talk about your brand. Can you send me some bottles? And I think asking him for free bottles really offended him. And he just never messed with me after that. <laughs> But I only wanted a bottle of the scent that I liked, you know, because I wanted to like really, really blow it up. And the last time I talked about, um, I talked about Unknown Pleasures, which was one of my favorite YouTube videos that I ever produced. It was one of the most involved videos that I ever had to edit. And I really enjoyed doing that video. I did it outside in Prospect Park. I love that fragrance. I talked about it so glowingly and I wanted to maintain a relationship, but he was not having it. <laughs> But I could hit him up and see if he'd want to be involved in, you know, joining my channel and talking to you all. Now, Precious Liquids, guys. Precious Liquids, I do, I've heard amazing things, but I haven't experienced them. So I can't really co-sign. And that's the reason why I didn't add it. But it could be on the next list because I will be adding, I have a, I have a lot of fragrance brands that I think are really well priced that kind of get lost and forgotten about. So this is just a portion of that list. Um, we will be talking about them going forward. Uh, imaginary author sample packs are great. In a bookcase, very clever and cheap for what you get, 100%. I uh, couldn't agree with you more, Redoesco. I am blown away by what they're doing. I am absolutely blown away by what imaginary authors, imaginary authors does. I kind of feel like because that brand was like the darling for a lot of the first YouTubers, the early YouTubers, you know, like the Robes 08, the, the, um, the Sebastians, the, um, the Stevens, you know, the Carlos, rest in peace, my man. Um, the, the YouTubers that were doing it for the love of YouTube, I mean, doing it for the love of perfume and, you know, wanting to give back, you know, their passion to people who needed help. Um, they kind of talked a lot about imaginary authors, but over the last few years, I feel like imaginary authors has gotten kind of forgotten about, and I don't understand why. I really don't get why, because even their classic fragrances are new to everyone, to, new to like 99% of people, you know? 99% um, of people don't even know that fragrance, that the brand exists. So yeah, it's gotten really popular amongst people in the fragrance community, but people have not talked about it. They're talking more about other things now. So the Parfum de Marlies, the Initios, those are brands that are getting a lot of attention today. And no one is really talking about um, imaginary authors and it just makes no sense because it needs to be um, remembered, you know, not forgotten about. Um, ah, I need to get my whiff, I need to get my nose on Waffle Cone. I heard that it is really beautiful for the ladies. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to try that too um, on a woman's skin. I'm curious to see what it smells like. Enjoying the stream. I'm learning a lot about other fragrance houses in the world. Can't wait to try these houses. I'm glad you appreciate it, De Dedrick. Thank you so much for joining this live, brother. I really appreciate you. Um, Geo cosigns my point. Floriental is amazing. A hundred percent agree with you. I think it's probably like one of the best like incense plum fragrances on the market. So many of those fragrances have been discontinued. Plum Japanese by Tom Ford, gone. 
um, Andy Warhol Silver Silver Factory, I believe it was, gone. You know, so Floriental is one of the only plummy, dark plum fragrances that a man can wear that um, that's available to us at the moment, which is really, really ridiculous. Uh, Ah, Two Man is my favorite. Great taste, Micah. Great fragrance. Um, <laughs> fish Man killed Amwage. What the hell you mean by Fish Man? <laughs> what is Fish Man, bro? Um, <laughs> fish Man. You know what's funny? I wonder if you're talking about like, cause like I can't, I can't get into Fate by Amwage. That scent, I own it and I hate it. I don't know why I got it. Um, Actually, I didn't buy a big bottle. I was lucky. I got a, I bought a tester from Twisted Lily right before they closed the store. Twisted Lily in Brooklyn, they was closing the last day. I got, I was like their last customer, and they were selling testers at that point. I ended up buying that. I was like, I ain't never smelled this. Got home, sprayed it on myself. I was like, whoa. But I only spent like $15 for a half a tester of fate. So um, it smells like cumin. You know, I feel like, like curry. <laughs> Oh, no. Um, can you list the 10 for us latecomers? Absolutely. My top, like, so just to end this off, guys, just to recap, Savoir Fair, great brand that I think a lot of people um, are focusing on. I haven't smelled them, so I'm not talking all about them, but I really am curious about Savoir Fair. Um, so I'm going to be focusing on them a little bit more. I'm getting their sample pack. And um, I'm really excited to try them because I really think this price point, 135 for these, seems like an amazing bargain, especially from what people are telling me that how great they are. Um, Diptyque, Eau de Toilettes, $130 for the 50 mils, $125 for the 50 mils, $175 for the 100 mils. Very great bargain, especially amongst popular niche brands. An amazing bargain. Their Eau de Toilettes are really, really beautiful. Um, the Zoo. The Zoo is probably one of the most artistic brands that I'm talking about at this point um, in this group of fragrances. But man, are the Zoo perfumes insane and also crazy well priced for what you're getting. Honestly, this brand could be in the 300 price point for 60 mils easily, easily. And the fact that you can get these fragrances for less than $150 for 60 mils from an artist as amazing as Christophe Flor de Miel is just amazing to me and next level. Another brand that you all need, another brand just to recap, Majda Bacali, 50 mils for 140 or some odd dollars. Like, I mean, for $140 for a 50 mil of this brand, I just feel like, whoa, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, I just can't, like, words don't describe how amazing it is to get this brand for $140 for a 50 mil. I just, I just, I'm, I'm just blown away by that. Like, I need to buy all of them. <laughs> Kerosene, another brand worthy of attention, worthy of focus, worthy of getting your nose on them. $152 for 100 mils. And this brand has been well-priced forever. Like, this brand has been out for, for at least, I think, like a decade or so. And the fact that you can get their fragrances still for under $200, $152 for these fragrances is just not, it's just like, how does he pay his bills? <laughs> how does he pay his bills? Like, I don't know, man, but like one of the best bargains in fragrance, in my opinion, comes from Kerosene. Paris Monte Carlo, one of the best French, well, one of the best European brands that you can buy in the United States without question. Like every collection they make is sick. Every collection, there's one fragrance in every collection that is a 10, in my opinion. At least one fragrance from every collection that is a perfect fragrance within that collection. Like they're just next level. The fact that you can buy these fragrances for $200, again, a bargain, just a bargain. Um, another brand that no one talks about that they should. The next one, Tower. Andy Tower, sick, sick freaking brand. Eau Cour de Désert, my favorite fragrance from the collection, but Lea is a legend. Lea des Alpes Suisse, amazing, fresh, clean mountain water scent. Um, I love their Cologne de Maghreb, is great also. Thalo Blue, nice. 
I, I like Thalo. I like Thalo Blue. I think it's really great. Um, Lone Star Memory is another one. Great fragrances. All of the tower scents are worthy of considering, worthy of trying, in my opinion, and the price point makes it a no-brainer. Imaginary authors, like, oh my God, when it comes to price point for what you're getting, one of the best values in the world of perfume. $105 for 50 mils of some of the most artistic, interesting fragrances by an independent perfumer. Just sick. Comme de Garçon, one of the best, if not the best designer brand in the world of fragrance. I consider Comme de Garçon, Chanel, Guerlain, and Hermes, and Prada the top five best designer brands in the world of fragrance. Um, and I think Comme de Garçon might be number one, from my taste. Only because when I smell Comme de Garçon, I'm smelling amazing and I'm smelling like no one. And that's what I love about this brand. They don't try to make you smell cool. They don't try to make you smell nice. They make you smell like art. You smell like, like one of the best people in the room. By the way, this fragrance right here called Ganja, I'm really curious to smell it. Never smelled it, but smell, looks like it could be interesting. And I also want to get my nose on this Cause option. This Cause release looks pretty interesting too. But anyway, the Pebble Bottles, like, I think, like, there are 14 different pebble bottles. I love at least 10 of them. <laughs> um, this fragrance right here, black, is next level. Avignon, next level. But black is probably my favorite fragrance from Comme des Garçons, um, from men. Nicolai Parfum. Whew, Patricia de Nicolai. If you like fragrances that are refined, classic leaning, high quality, very French, you have to consider Nikolai. She creates beautiful fragrances and you can get her 30 mil bottles for under $80 or $100. Under $100 for their 30 mils. Like, I think you can get them for like about 80 bucks. It's, it's, it's stealing. It's literally stealing. Um, and this is a great brand as well. From Prin, their niche line Strangers is their entry level niche brand. $90 30 mil bottles, which are sickly, sickly priced for what you're getting. I mean, like, just just a beautiful house that creates very natural, clean, I don't know if they're clean, I can't say that, but they're very, very natural smelling fragrances that you don't experience anywhere else. They have a high quality and a really, really accessible price point, which is why they're here. And um, yeah, we're gonna be talking about next bottles in um, a future stream. But just to recap to you all, those are the, those are the fragrances that I was chatting about in this stream. Um, amazing, 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 amazing fragrances without question. Um, and so, yeah, those are the fragrances, my guy. Um, just rewatch my friend, great stream. A nose has to develop over time. Absolutely. All of our noses change over time and our and the way then the way we i freaking hate my shirt today ah i'm never buying a brooks brothers dress shirt in my life i i'm just not doing it again i hate this shirt so much it's been annoying the hell out of me all day guys you have no idea i literally bought this tie because i don't have like purple ties ever so i bought this versace tie to match this shirt and i hate this shirt and i'm mad anyway i don't know I, ah anyway <laughs> um yes yeah, so uh yes uh renee salmon did take over for christopher chung from amouage and i gotta tell you i am not into what he's doing so far I'm not a fan of the direction he's taking Amouage, but someone needed to take Amouage down that road because Amouage is becoming way too niche for their ambition, you know? Like, Amouage has ambition to be in every major high-end store in the world, right? Um, I would imagine. They're trying to get in the Harrods, the Bergdorf, the Nordstrom's, the Saks, you know? They're trying, to, they're trying to make it. They're trying to get in there, you know? Um, <laughs> but... I feel like a lot of his fragrance, I feel like they're all very, very like, oh, he's the fish man. Got you. Thank you so much for making sense. For, um, making that make sense to me. Um, got you. Salmon. Ha. <laughs> got you, bro. Might could be low-key funny. Um, <laughs> that's the fish man. 
I kind of miss Christopher Chung. I really do. I feel like Christopher Chung knew Amawaj and we're going to miss him, I think. I think, you know, because I feel like now Amawaj is going down the Dior world. They're, they're, they're going to be like Dior-ish, you know, approachable easy, you know. But anyway, um, Ylang Ylang, Nosy B is great. I got to agree with you, Carl. It's a serious fragrance. Looking sharp. Thank you so much, Micah. Really appreciate you. Go M to M E. You deserve it. What's N to M? I am like, I don't know what nothing is happening. I don't know what anything is today. <laughs> oh, no. M2M? I got to know what that is. Um, next week, guys, I'd also in, like to invite a couple of you. Um, it's all about sales now. I, yeah, it's all about sales now with Amouage. But you know what, though? It makes sense because you have to, you know, they're in business. You know, it's hard to create fragrances like they created that you don't re up on regularly and stay in business. You have to stay relevant, right? So when you buy Amouage, you're not going to you're not going to finish an Amouage 100 ml bottle in a year unless you probably have like four fragrances in your collection made to measure. Got you. Appreciate you, bro, bro. Um so when you buy an Amouage, you're not spending like you're spending a crazy amount of money, but that 100 ml bottle is going to stay on that. It's going to last for a long time because their fragrances are so strong and intense. So in that meantime, you're not replenishing for a really long time. So their turnover, their return customer comes like every two to three years, not every year, like a lot of these designer brands or like a Parfum de Marley, right? So because Parfum, well, I'm not going to. Anyway. <laughs> So that's one of the reasons why a brand like Amouage had to do something to be like relevant to new people. Because again, like, you know, it's not easy to sell artistic perfumes at that price point that's as strong as they are because you're not going to sell a lot of bottles to a lot of people. So it does make sense that that brand needed to do something to evolve itself to it, to a different audience, to a different market. I just feel like they just went too basic in my opinion. But anyway, <laughs> I know I need to get made to measure shirts, bro. Um, I usually go with a brand called Kamakura and then I just, um, there, it's a Tokyo, um, it's a Tokyo dress. I guess you could say it's a brand that makes shirts in Tokyo called Kamakura. I love Kamakura shirts, right? So I get this one specific size and I get them tailored to fit. But the other day I went and bought a, bought a Brooks Brothers and I'm so mad. I'm like, ah, like this is like, ah, too much room. You see that? Way too much room, right? Then it's this button. Ah, I'm not going to get into it. I just hate this right now. <laughs> but anyway, guys, like I'm really grateful for you all checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed this first install of, you know, this thing is kind of crooked. Forgive me. But I hope you all appreciated this first install of my favorite niche brands that are easy breezy on your pockets, but yet they smell like they could be worth double, triple what they cost. And so I hope you all like this line. I hope you all like this, this concept. I am going to be, um, I am going to be talking about a lot more of these fragrances going forward. I have another, I, I have another 10 fragrances already in mind. And a couple of you are offering me some great suggestions. And so a few of your suggestions are already on the list that I've been making. So, yeah, you'll see that next video. But anyway, guys, I am really grateful. I got to get out of Bergdorf before they close the store on me. But I'm really grateful for you all. Thank you so much for joining this latest live. Um, it was an absolute pleasure. Guys, go to the perfume room. I'm on. Um, there's a there's a beautiful pot. It's an awesome podcast for perfume called The Perfume Room with Emma Vernon. Emma Vernon, Vernon, and she creates, um, she has a perfume room podcast that I've been a, um, interviewed on. So check that out. Go to any of your favorite places to check out a podcast. Look up the perf look up perfume room with Emma Vernon. And I am episode 101. I'm really, really excited to be on that platform. Like it's like an amazing, um, I felt like I felt uh, verified like you know I had like being on that platform was like a blue check mark for me because some of the most 
Some of the most iconic people that I look up to in the world of fragrance has been interviewed by Emma on that platform. So to be a member, to be another person on that, I was really, 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 really blown away. So guys, thank you so much. Please check out that live stream. Um, please check out that podcast, um, Emma Vernon, 101 episode. The episode 101, it just came out yesterday. And um, tell me what you think, guys. Thank you so much. Please come back. Leave a message. Um, leave a comment when this video uploads on YouTube. I know you guys did your thing in the comment section on the live, but if you can come back and, you know, leave a little comment to let people know what your favorite um, indie brands are that have a great price point. I mean, like, let's try to help as many people as possible. Um, and like this video if you can on your way out. I really am grateful for that. It was an amazing experience to, again, connect with you all. I'm that cologne guy E, and this is Simply Put Incense. Not incense, but incense. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining, guys. I'll see you next week. Be safe. Stay blessed. Peace.